Got a great show. Uh, went shopping yesterday. Oh, um, right, yeah. 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 Got Wesley Willis. Oh, it's beautiful. I found I've it. Back. I can't yeah, believe it. Wesley Willis, Rock and Roll Will Never Die. I've been be playing some of my favourite. I don't know whether to play Hootie and the Blowfish, Kurt Cobain, Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd. They're all the same song. <laughs> it's interesting because, Gervais, you know, in the in the time that we've been on, we've had a lot of new listeners join us, and yeah. they haven't perhaps heard Wesley Willis. No. What a treat they've got in store. Well, I'll explain that a little bit later. I've also, um... Wesley Willis is here. Oh. Once again, I was struggling, you know, as I, uh, don't plan the show, obviously. Of course. Um, but my book exchange in the in the courtyard of my oh, house, of course, yeah. it's come through again. <laughs> Brilliant. I've got a little book now, here. Now, what, what was the last book you got from the book exchange? Um, uh, how to, how to, how to, how to beat we... PMT by Diet. How to beat PMC by dying. Wish yeah. I could give away. I've got that at home. That would be a great prize one day. A wonderful prize. A lot of women would look forward to that. It's a little paperback here. Go on. Doris Stokes, Voices in My Ear. <laughs> I'm intrigued. The autobiography of a medium. A medium what? I don't, I don't know. But I've got to read you the bit off the back. You'll love this, okay? <laughs> She's helped to solve murder cases. She filled the Sydney Opera House three nights in a row. It doesn't say with what. Once... She even had to convince a man he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> now she's written her own astonishing life story. Her name is Doris Stokes. I'll be reading little excerpts from Wait, that. I just, I, mean, I don't know if you've read it, but why did she have to convince a man I he was dead? I don't know, it's in and there. how did she do it? I don't know. Well, that's just one of the uh, little questions we'll be asking oh. on XFM. Are you... 104.9. Before you do... 104.9, Ricky Gervais Show. I'm Ricky Gervais, and I've got... Wesley Willis is, well, one of his um, greatest LPs. I think he's actually recorded about 4,000 songs. <laughs> um, now, the thing is, uh, this is quite true, he's a chronic schizophrenic and is often troubled by demons that dictate what he can do and what can't be done. Uh, the de demons sometimes prevent Wesley Willis travelling on airplanes, telling that his music is no good, and on occasion have forced him to destroy musical instruments. Now, can I just stop you there? I don't think it's demons telling him his music's no good. <laughs> I think that's members of the public, anybody who's bought one of oh, his albums. Oh, and um, he's, he's released 14 CDs um, by himself. He just makes them up and sells them. It's fantastic. This is um, uh, the first track on Rock and Roll Will Never Die. It's called um, Hootie and the Blowfish. Excellent. It's classic. It is. So, um, I'll, I'll play Kurt Cobain. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Perhaps we'll listen to that. I wonder yeah. if that's sort of different. I wonder what kind of um, interpretation he gives to that particular band, oh, and I wonder how he sort of utilises I've done how to work this machine. You don't have to do it? Well, perhaps we should leave it, Gervais, come back to it. Don't what? feel pressurised, I know we're keen to hear Wesley, I know, but don't, I, feel, I, don't feel pressure. Look, it won't let me do it. There's no pressure on you, Gervais, I know you're getting a bit panicky now, I can see the sweat on your forehead. Well, when it just, why, why doesn't it do what I think? Well, why you, do I have to actually press buttons and it doesn't know what I want? No, but that's because, that's because you're not Doris Stokes, Gervais. <laughs> You cannot use telekinesis to to run this radio show. <laughs> oh, this is this should be. So is this is this. Ah, it's Nirvana. The bottom, Steve, my chauffeur and researcher. You're meant to have found out why Doris Stokes had to convince a man he was dead. Gervais, I've been looking through Voices in My Ear, the autobiography of Doris Stokes, the yeah. famous medium, and it, I must say it's a fascinating read. It's not a biography, and it's by someone. Yeah, I know. It's not it's, by Doris well, Stokes. Doris is too busy contacting the other side, Gervais. Yeah. Um, but to basically, let me just to answer that, yeah, on the back it does say that once Doris had to convince a man he was dead, <laughs> it's not as interesting as it sounds. Oh. He was dead. Well, obviously. And she saw him, you know, and he, and he wasn't, he, he, she, she, a big groom of people, and he was like a ghostly figure, and he said, yeah. I'm not dead. She went, you are dead, get out. You've had a similar yourself. argument with someone once, weren't you, at a dinner party? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. he proved her wrong though, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, she just, that happens a lot though, some people don't believe that, you know what it's like. Yeah. You go to the afterlife, no one tells you. I know. You're walking round, you're, you're dead mate, don't be stupid. You know. Exactly. She had to actually push the coffin lid down, apparently. It's a... Viagra, he died of. I'm reading here about her, one of her first paranormal experiences. She yeah. moved into a house with her husband. Um, there were ghostly apparitions there in the house, right? And it was haunted. She didn't mind. There was a, an old, an old ghost called Polly. Yeah, it's lovely the ghost, yeah. Anyway, so, um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Johnson from nearby comes in and she's brought, uh, she's making a cake, basically. And, uh, she says, um, we chatted for a moment. Uh, any more trouble lately with the ghost? So, Mrs. Johnson, no. Old Polly's been quiet for, uh, for quite a while now. But the words were hardly out of my mouth when the bowl of eggs I was baking with Not was, bowl of eggs. was torn from my hands and hurled across the room. Oh. Instinctively, I dived after it, did a flying tackle. <laughs> on the bowl of eggs. And caught it before it hit the ground. Now, I must say that Doris, at this point, has already lost a pair of tights. 
Oh, right. no. Polly's already had a pair of tights. Oh, no. Now the eggs are in danger. <laughs> oh, God. You can just stop that, Polly, I yelled furiously and slammed the bowl of eggs on the table. She'd already cost me a pair of stockings. She wasn't spilling my eggs as well. Oh, that's got to be a euphemism. That's got to be a dirty book. Doris Stokes there, fighting the paranormal. You can't lie with the dead, so what you want. Can we? Yeah. You can't label the dead? No. So we can slag off Doris Stokes? You could say she drank buckets of, um, just after the break, we've got Oasis. Is that you mean to tell me you can't libel the dead? You can't libel the dead, no. I, I don't believe that for one moment. You can't, it's true. That's ridiculous. It doesn't mean you can say, there's certain stuff you can't say anyway, whether it's true or not. It's taste and decency, and I, I couldn't, you couldn't say Doris Stoke drank copious amounts of horse spunk, because you couldn't actually say that on the radio, because that would be offensive but could anyway. Could I say, I mean, uh, Catherine Cookson died recently. Yeah. Can I say that Catherine Cookson used to bend over the sink and her husband would, I mean, can I? Well, again, taste and decency. I mean, you know, she, you couldn't be sued for it. Like, let's see, um, you could say Doris Stokes was a smackhead, for example. Right. You know. It's not very interesting, though. No, because it was true. Yeah, exactly. She used to jack up all over the yeah. place. Yeah, and she used to, I mean, the trips used to take. Oh, All that God. nonsense about seeing and speaking to people <laughs> on the yeah. other side, that's rubbish. She was off her tits. <laughs> LSD, I know. my love. Yeah. Hello. 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 Did you listen to it? Oh, I listened to it. Yeah. And you told me you don't swear. What did I say? You said bastard. No, that's all right. That's not swearing. And it? No, it's a lot. It's an illegitimate child. No, oh, that's what you called that, Steve. What did I say? You bastard or something. Why, what, why did I say that? I can't remember. Nor can I, Nate. Eh? Oh, I know, because he, his uncle bought him something and he told oh, him he didn't yeah. like it. And he didn't appreciate it. No. Isn't that nasty, though? <laughs> old, old bloke, he's got wooden teeth, apparently. <laughs> he's got what? He's got wooden teeth. Oh, that's his granddad. His granddad's got wooden teeth or something, and he's got three left. <laughs> <laughs> and he said they have to cook meat for about for eight hours so, you, so he can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> You're bling terrible. I better start thinking of some um, things that have happened to Bob, hadn't I? So I can get him involved. Well, he was a horrible little gay. Who? Bob? Bob was. Well, what did he do? I remember he had you up the hallway with Peter Miller teasing you and dropped you on your head. I was dropped on my head when I was a kid. <laughs> How old was I? He must have only been two or three. Dropped uh, you up the hallway. And what did you do? Belted him. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did he say then? I don't know. What did I... Did I was he only playing? I landed on my head, right? <laughs> and what did I do? Was I unconscious or did I cry or...? No. You thought it was funny. <laughs> Good job I landed on me, is not it? Are you going to continue to exploit your mother on yeah. the radio for cheap laughs? Yes. You are? Yeah. That phone call, a lot of questions are raised. What? The first one, obviously, that springs to mind, you were dropped on your head as a child. Yeah. It answers a lot of questions. Yeah. Gervais, you know, I, because I did... I don't even know who Peter Miller is. I... Where is Peter Miller now? Who is he? Let me be honest with you. I want to... Can I just be honest and confess something to you? Yeah. I have been making inquiries because I thought you had Creutzfeldt Jakob disease. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I thought you had CJD. I'm all absolutely <laughs> earnest and serious about this, right? Because my dad once we thought he was, he was we thought he might be ill, and we yeah. had it checked over, and it was terrible. It was a terrible moment. I felt sick, yeah. and that's exactly what I felt like with you. Really? Um, no. But I did think you might have CJD, yeah. and um, I've been making inquiries. Yeah. The symptoms seem to be there. <laughs> Gervais, you can barely string a sentence together. <laughs> You're slovenly. You look at you. I mean, do you know what I mean? You let yourself go. You forget to wash. You forget I, to I brush stagger your teeth. home. You stagger home every night. Yeah. You don't finish sentences. Yeah. You, do you know what I mean? It's pointing in that direction. So do you think I've got CJG, B, B, A, B, A, C, right? From the Agricultural College. Three BSEs. 0171580. 2000. Remember how it works? <laughs> 0171580-2000. Please, can somebody who knows about these things analyse Ricky Gervais' symptoms and find out... It, there's got to be something wrong with him. We think maybe now that he was dropped on his head as a child, that's perhaps a clue. If you're a medical person, if you've done some uh, research into this, please give us a call, find out what's wrong with Gervais before it's too late. It, perhaps, it's, it, perhaps it is too late, Gervais. You know, you're not a young man anymore. You're 37 plus. Um, you're, you're a goner. Um, and uh, so, yeah, give us a call, 0171580. Oh my god, it's catching. <laughs>
remember the tent you built at the back really? yeah <laughs> and I remember I didn't know didn't get it till I was 18 that Marsha had put the caption in the um, photo album Ricky's Camp oh yeah you know I'm taping this don't you oh not again yeah good job I ain't swearing then you eh? did you said at the beginning see I'm going to take that out of context it's just going to be you going bastard just like I've got you saying ass. <laughs> Listen to that, Muttley. Listen to that. We're mathematic, can I? Oh, I'm mathematic, can I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen. Oh, I'm going to shut up. Just laugh a minute. Just laugh. Oh, God. What did you call me? I said I can't. So you can't say that on the radio. What? That word you said. I can't. Just stop it. You can't swear on the radio and that's I'm the not saying what you think I'm saying. <laughs> what are you saying? I can't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> You're disgusting, you are. Oh. <laughs> Rick, 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 drastically. <laughs> Remember that time when you we were coughing and you oh, coughed up that and you killed next door's cat? Oh, you know it. It was a little bit of hard lung that shot out. That they reckon. Oh, I've never gone that far. <laughs> You're disgusting. Right, I better go then. Right. All right, then I'll see you later. Cheerio. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Smiths. It's terrifying. What? It really is. Your relations. <laughs> I mean, all right, so my, my, you know, my, my, my relations, all right, their faces aren't symmetrical, <laughs> but... But at least I don't have wheezy, weird laughs like that. Yeah, I know, and drop people on their heads. Oh, drop people on their heads. Right, I've got to tell you, I wish I was taping uh, uh, her today. She called me today. She went, and heard of you from a while? I said, I called you last week. No, you didn't. I said, well, just before Thursday, yeah. Anyway, I went swimming Wednesday. <laughs> I went, did you? Where? She went, in the fish pond. <laughs> <laughs> totally true. I went, what? She went, I fell in, it was up to my neck, and I could hear my nephew shouting, it's only two foot deep. <laughs> like, it's a little fish bomb with a lot, it is, it's like about, it, it's not even two foot deep, it's about eight inches deep. She went, well, <laughs> I'm pissing myself. She's going, well, I was cutting back the lavender, right, and three frogs jumped at me. <laughs> three frogs jumped at me. <laughs> I know she meant uh, anyway, right? So <laughs> it's three Frenchmen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I thought no, that's a racial slur. Um, <laughs> but anyway, no, because they know because French people <laughs> yeah. do lo like to hide they, in lavender hide and frighten seventy-three-year-old well, women. They do. Knows that. It's well-known fact. Knows I know that that. They lurk around, yeah, ready to attack in stripy white, white and blue t-shirts and berets with onions. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, these three frogs. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I say, who is it? That president, that dead president of France. What's his name? Oh. With the big nose. You know what he used to do? Well, exactly. He used to drink bucketfuls of. Anyway, right? You can do it because he's dead. He's dead. He's yeah, gone. he's gone. Anyway, um, so um, she went, and I went in, and I fell in, and I was sitting on the bottom, and it was coming up to my neck. And she went, and I tried to get out, but it was all algae on the side, and I kept slipping back in, right? <laughs> my dad says, Lee, help your nan. <laughs> and she said, uh, and I got out and I, I said, put Lee on. I was, I was speaking to my nephew. He said, she went into the pond, right? And she said, she floundered around, right? And she got out and she walked, she ran to the kitchen. She said, she dropped all her clothes and ran upstairs naked because she thought she might have leeches on. <laughs> <laughs> leeches? <laughs> She's not Humphrey Bogart in The African Queen. <laughs> she said, it wouldn't have mattered if it was Ace full of company. I'd have still stripped off and run upstairs. Oh, she said, I didn't drop the scissors. And she said, I had to throw my slippers away. <laughs> <laughs> so we're laughing at the fact that your elderly mother yeah. fell, slipped in a pond, yeah. <laughs> could easily have injured herself quite seriously. Who yeah. knows? Now she could have 
Sort of leeches? Yeah, she's probably got leeches, Any yeah. kinds of, um... The Frenchman you know, scarfed. There's no the sign French of them. Gone. Well, they're like that, aren't they? The they're, French. All they found, they, they just left a beret. I tell you, the French, I mean, you know, any, oh. sign, of, any sign of trouble, Gervais, they're out of there. Oh, you know, God. Oh, I just like the idea of just running into the kitchen and stripping off oh, just a ball of slime. <laughs> and they're upstairs. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get in the bath, she said. Yeah, and two oh. ladies from next door, from the <laughs> Women's Guild, just sipping tea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there she goes. There goes Mrs. Gervais. <laughs> Naked as the day she was born, covered in algae. <laughs> oh, God. That, that's a Gervais oh, for you. Oh, it's one of the most... ...for Blood on the Tracks. And that was for, um, Doris Stokes. Oh, the late, great medium Doris Stokes. Yeah. We'll play that for her. Yeah. yeah. Who apparently, uh, Doris apparently was a prostitute. She was a whore. She was a whore. Yeah. Um... You can't libel the dead. You can't libel the dead. That's not libelous. No. Um, no. Yeah. She apparently went at it hammer and tongs. All the time. anybody that had a check. <laughs> Oh, right. yes. Uh, Gervais, um, may maybe I won't well, I've had mention. a good eight months in radio, haven't we've I? Had a good, we've, had yeah. a fun, we've had a bit of fun. I was going to tell you about something, but I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll tell you in a minute. It's incredible. It, it, I mean, they just flow from him. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, that, of course, comes from the classic Wesley Willis album, Rock and Roll Will Never Die. Just reading the sleeve notes, Gervais. And um, Rock and Roll Will Never Die represents the best of Wesley's previously available material about rock musicians. Um, it's uh, his quote, pers his personal quote is... This CD whoops the llama's ass with a belt. Not sure I know what that means, but uh, anyway, apparently... Uh, I, Doris Stokes knows. <laughs> hey, you can't label the dead. No. Well, Wesley Dirty. says... <laughs> Wesley carries copies of his CDs with him when he travels, just in case he meets someone with $10 in their pocket. Oh, excellent. And that's a beautiful track. Track 8 on that classic album, and of course, Spin Doctors. Let's hear a bit more. Yeah. Different sentiment altogether. Oh, it's completely different. This one is uh, about the Spin Doctors. <laughs> hey! Yeah. Well, that's that. that was for that Laura. Was anyway, wrote me a lovely letter. Wesley. Remember yesterday, um, last week, sorry, I was going about, and we could do the best of Ricky Gervais. Yeah. So I could just, like, get bits off the login tape and package it, and we wouldn't have to come in. We could, like, sunbathe or something. And she said, maybe you could do um, the best of Ricky Gervais, all the things that didn't happen. Yeah. All the things we said we were going to do, and then didn't. And uh, there are quite a few. There are quite a few, but she goes on as well, because we're talking about reincarnation. And um, she believes in that, um, uh, the uh, Hindu view um, of karma. So if in through your life you do good things, you build up your good karma, bad things, bad karma. Then when you die, they, m they mount it all up, tot it all up, and you're reincarnated if you do um, nice things. It's a, a wonderful existence. Lovely, probably good looks, oh, everything. Everyone loves you. And if you're really bad... Then you come back as some hideous, like a maggot or a fish, and you have a horrible life. And um, the idea leads to, to wonder what you did that was so bad in your last life. I'm not rising to it. No. You're not baiting me. You're not baiting me. Javis, can I just say, I, you know, we've had some fun, we've had some laughs over the uh, the last couple of months. Yeah. But I'm a little bit, <laughs> I'm a little bit sick and annoyed about all this slagging me off, claiming that I'm some ugly, grotesque freak of nature or whatever. Because, you know, we get loads of faxes coming in yeah. saying, Steve, you're a freak, you're, a, you know, you're an inhumanoid. Yeah. Um, and all this sort of rubbish. And, you know, it's not true. And you've just, you've perpetuated this myth no, for a no. long time. And it's getting a bit irritating. It's winding me up. And I, as I've said to you before, um, I got into radio. I got into this broadcasting thing where the chances of becoming a celebrity are fairly strong. Right? Mm. I got into this in an effort to meet women, to, to make, get a lady. To, to get a lady. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's just, it's not helping me out no. with all this. Well, I told you, you shouldn't pick careers based on whether you can get a woman. Well. Like the gynecology thing. That's why that fell flat. Yeah, but I, no, that was going all right. I mean, I overstepped a few times, you know, by just sort of mentioning, remember I mentioned to that woman that we should just go back and. Yeah. Sort of like a the first thing you say, ways. exactly, and the other thing is someone could just say, uh, Way! That doesn't put women at their ease. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Would you, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Johnson, would you mind just taking yeah. your clothes off? Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, look at yeah. hell. Say, look at oh that. dear. Look at, oh, can I film this for the lads? Yeah. You know what I mean? I did have, yeah, that ran, I ran into problems. This yeah. is Happy Mondays. Yeah. Pinky yeah. Afro. But just, would you just stop now with the... Of course I will. You're a good looking fella. Well... It's oh, the classics, Gervais. I just got to thinking, I wonder if we, I mean, I think I mentioned this before, it'd be great to contact Wesley and get him to do a song about the Ricky Gervais show. Ricky Gervais! Ricky Gervais! Well, you pretty much done it for us. Yeah. Beautiful. Gervais, um, coming in on today... He had a radio show. There was about a hundred people listening. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, mm, I think he's been a bit generous. Yeah. There. Gervais, um, I was on the tube coming in, and I got to thinking about 
you know, my lack of success with the ladies. And I could trace it back to something, right, trace it back to a moment. When, when I was in the uh, the last year of my junior school, what, well, I don't know, I don't know, 11, 11, something like that, we went to... Um, you're, you're only about six foot two then, weren't you? Yeah, and we uh, we went to this sort of um, place in Cornwall, sort of an adventure camp, you know, we oh. stayed there for like three days. That was like the Riviera too, wasn't it? Exciting stuff, and we had lots of, you know, all sort of climbing frames and like adventure courses and, you know, abseiling and all the rest of it. And in the evening, what they'd do is you'd go in and uh, they'd have, uh, it was like a little disco, every evening, a little disco, right? And um, they'd, I remember they played, um, they played that tune, that theme music from, um, from, do, 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 do
But I didn't, I didn't have the guts to tell my dad what it meant. Oh, no. So he carries on using it, and to this day, we were driving along, he'll say, um, to my mum, Elaine, watch where you're going, you twat, you great big twat. <laughs> And I just want to say to him, Dad, don't say that to my mum, because she knows, oh, she knows what it means. Oh, no, but really? She's not, she's not going to say to him, oh, God, Ron, would you stop saying that word, because... Yeah, mm. same thing happened to me. My dad still says Fouch. Does he? Yeah. Oh, Felchin, talking of that, right, it's Doris Stokes. Yeah. She's got this huge... Four sailors four and a sailors. big bucket and, like, a weight and... Warm jets. And Hurricane. So they haven't actually told you it's your last show? No. It's not official. Well, they wouldn't know, would they? They'd be mad to. Yeah. I usually tell you, sort of, they, when you come off, they go, that was your last show. Mm. I mean... See, I'm annoyed, because if I'd, if I'd known it was the last show, I'd have, you know, led on something special. What, a buffet? Yeah, we could have a nice little buffet, you know. <laughs> invite, uh, invite round all the listeners. Yeah. You know, yeah. into the building. Yeah. Um... Could have probably squeezed him in the studio, in fact. I'd have thought so. <laughs> um, yeah. Got them all in, you know, I could have put on something nice, promise, uh, like a ball gang or something we special. We could have prepared the show. We could have... No, no, that was never going to happen. Stupid. Rome, do the jerk. Good advice. Uh, See, not, not all rock and roll's just like bland nonsense. Uh, when in Rome, do the jerk. Uh, Shall I give it away? As it's the last show. Man yeah. alive. Yeah? What Shall a way. I? What a way to go out. Yeah. Giving away the autobiography of Doris Stokes. Voices in my ear. Incredible. Lovely. Um, the paperback from what, 1972? I think so. I remember Doris Stokes was the medium, an, an elderly lady about sort of 60, and she filled stadiums in the 70s and 80s, and uh, the point was she went along, bereaved people, basically paid a lot of money to speak to their dead loved ones. And don't forget there, Doris Stokes, the whore, because you, you, can't, you can't libel the dead. You cannot libel the dead. Doris no. is gone. We're going to say what we want. Yeah. Um, so that's going to... Apparently, the... she wasn't even very good. No. No, you'd pay your money, and she just used to lie there at nothing. Uh, you didn't even get a bit of a sort of contact with your elderly father, you know. Pig. Yeah. Um, she's helped to solve murder cases. She's filled the Sydney Opera House three nights in a row. Once, she even had to convince a man he was dead. Brilliant. So, um, be thinking of a prize for that. I mean, you know... The phone line's 0171580-2000. Might be your last chance to, uh, give us a call. Um, but you could win Doris Stokes' Voices in My Ear, The Autobiography of a Medium. Brilliant. By, um, by Linda Deardsley. You've really thought this through, haven't you? How does that work? Show. How does that work? Beautiful. We're going to give away that grubby old tatty copy of Doris Stokes' autobiography. Man alive, we're really going out with a bang, Gervais. Okay, let's give some more stuff away. We might as well <laughs> let's give the, some of the good stuff out of the library away, the stuff we're not nicking. Let's just give away, let's just give away the XFM library. We'll go and get some stuff then, because yeah. I want some of it, and then we'll give the rest away. They could call in any, anyone they like. All right. Yeah? An no idea there. What? You played Nirvana, so I went in the in library. Bloom. I've got uh, a load of Nirvana stuff. Yeah. Um, I've got uh, Bleach, uh, the Unplugged album, Insect Insecticide. It is like someone reading French, isn't it? You don't know anything about it, do you? No. You don't know what you're doing. You no. don't know how important Nirvana were. You don't care. You don't know how to pronounce it. That's fantastic. Um, from the muddy banks of the Wishka. Whatever that means. Um, yeah. Uh, what's that? Hormoning? Yeah. Never heard of it. And yeah. obviously, never mind. Kurt, Cobby, uh, Bayani, Cobbygani. I'll tell you something, Chavez. He's dead. I thought to myself, you've got Nirvana there. A lot of people have already got those. Yeah. What they haven't got... A lot of people have. ...is so. this signed copy of Nevermind. You can't give that away. No, look, I'm no, reading, no, no, no. I'm reading on the inside sleeve, uh, Chris Novoselic, Novoselic, Jesus. David Grohl, and Kurt Cobain signed that. Yeah. And I didn't get that from the library, that's from upstairs in the office. Yeah. Well, that is obviously someone's personal copy, probably the boss's, so you can't give that away. Well... I don't. I think. I think the time for morals <laughs> has long since gone. <laughs> you know I mean? No, don't give give all the rest away because that. Oh sort come of... on! No, you can't give that away. That is someone's prized possession. I guarantee there's somebody out there that would that would put aside those moral questions and accept this. What you mean? You're going to ask people? Do you think you should have it? Yeah. Oh one seven one five eight zero two thousand. Do you think you should have it? Even though it's someone's prized possession. Mind you, so was this radio station. There's a fax here. If there was one man I would like to be stuck in the Stena stair lift with, it would be Steve. How about it, honey? Love Thora heard. Oh, beautiful. No, I... no, it's good to know Thora's listening. Yeah. She's got a... F Thora, see, has got a finger on the new music pulse. Yeah, she's got one finger on the new, the new music pulse. She's got the other on that emergency buzzer thing. In case <laughs> she has a fall. Your hip would break. <laughs> I think it's a fake. Do you? you see, you, you can libel the living. Oh, right. Yeah. Let's leave it a few months. 
and then we're st- <laughs> <laughs> I got a break here, then some uh, go oh no. We're never working radio again, no. that's the thing. An hour to go, Steve. Yep, it's going very well. I've got one of these live read things to give away. It's good, actually. Got two pairs of tickets to give away to the uh, Llama Farmers gig um, at the 100 Club, 2nd of July. Um, and they're supported by Seafood and Jow, and they're both good bands. I know you've no idea. The 2nd of July? Yeah. That can't be right. It's, it's the 10th today. Yeah, but when I say 2nd, I mean 16th. Right. See what I was doing there? Right. I was just taking 14 off. Right, of course. Yeah. As any professional DJ would. <laughs> of course you do. Do you know yeah. that? Right. Do you know that you take 14 off? Is that in the DJ handbook? Yeah, yeah, I take 14 off. Oh, right. So any date that you read out, or any number, yeah. presumably, you always take off 14. Yeah. For any reason? Yeah. That's why people say, oh, D- Gary Crowley, he's 32. Right. See what I mean? They've taken off 14. Yeah. I understand. Um, on? Sorry to criticize. At the 100 Club, on the, well, when I say the 100 Club, <laughs> right. The 86 Club. Sure. The 86 Club on Oxford Street on July the 2nd. Yeah. Right, yeah. Which is, uh, actually that's a, just uh, five days away. Yeah, incredible that. <laughs> oh, 0171-5802-2000. It's pairs. beautiful. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't believe I haven't got a job at the end of this. Oh, God. They're going to sack you, and it's the most justified sacking <laughs> in the history of man. I'm Can not... you imagine going to the European <laughs> court? Going to the European court. I was un- I was unfairly sacked. What? Gervais, Gervais, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah, the judge would go. Yeah. He's Ricky, European. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, I accept him. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, take the book and read this. Of course you can't, can you? I prom... What's that? I pr- No, forget it. Yeah. yeah. I swear to tell the the the, tr- the truth. <laughs> oh dear! Under an hour to go. This is for you, Steve. This is um, Stevie Wonder. Oh. Say, no, I love it as well. It's a great choice, and um, it's just to say thanks because you know you've been good for me. Cheers. It's been great. I really, I couldn't have done it without you. No. And I just think if you'd have been sort of normal looking, or you could have got a girl, you, it wouldn't have been as funny because that's been most of our material. Let's be honest. You know what I mean? So just don't ever change it. Okay. Oh, that song as well, Blood, Sweat and Cum. Let's have a listen. Can oh. you play it for me? Yeah, okay. Got Camfield to voice it, because he's a bit like Vance. Be beautiful. Do you know be- what I mean? That'd be great. Keep the profile up. You, you'd be something for you in it, I reckon. Oh, really? Well, I don't know. Uh, drummer? Well, a lot of those heavy metal videos have people sort of, um, you know, kind of ugly creatures. I was going to say, like they? Metallica, they have like things that sort of like morph into you. <laughs> exactly. That would be amazing, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, that'd be great. I should see myself. I, that's a new career opening up for me. Oh, God. I, I, oh, that'd be amazing. I'd be like horror films. It'd be like, he'd be like, the special effect that isn't a special effect. I know. But they'd save so much money. You wouldn't need, like, computerized morph and stuff. You wouldn't need, like, the makeup. prosthetic makeup. Oh, that'd be amazing. I could become a star of zombie films. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, do you know what I mean? Seriously. But we'll do the heavy rock thing first, yeah? All right, heavy So, rock. anyone out there, any web company, I'll do um, Earplugs Are Gay or Blood, Sweat and Cum. I'm um, just one down a verse, right? And, and Steve's in the video. Yeah. We're laughing. Hello. Thanks for the card. Oh, you got it then. How old am I then? 37. Yeah, I know. 37. Yeah, soon be 40. Yeah, all right. You're cracking up the hill then, boy. Always <laughs> <laughs> well, begins at 40. Yeah? Yeah. What happened when you were 40 then? I started going out with Joan Johnson after I'd been locked in for 20 odd years. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God she was the youngest. Eh? Why? The last one. <laughs> Who knows what the next one would have been? Well. It's been catastrophic. Catastrophic. <laughs> no, go on, keep going. Catastrophic. <laughs> one more go. Catastrophic. <laughs> You haven't got your teeth in, have you? No. Oh, you filthy... Animal. Oh, you haven't got your teeth in. I'm just eating my dinner. You're eating your dinner with no No, teeth? No, I took it. I was eating my dinner. Oh, that is disgusting. So why did you take your teeth out for then? You have to wash them. There's nobody here. Only your father in here and anybody. Oh. (laughs) Do you still crimp the pastry with your false teeth? Because that is disgusting. Oh, no. Darth Vader. It's like Darth Vader. You are disgusting, Rick. Oh, God, I can't believe you haven't got your teeth in. Well, it's difficult to say catastrophic. 
<laughs> oh, God. Well, let me hear you say it. Catastrophic. That's it. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right, all right, then. I better go now. Right. Right, see you later. Cheerio. Bye. Last ever. <laughs> Ricky Gervaisia. Almost certainly. Almost. That was for Becky, um, who's having her wisdom teeth out tomorrow. <laughs> Don't envy her. Oh, no. No, do you know what they do? What they do is, right, they they tie you down and like, you look like how and they, no, no, it's, it's fine. They've got, um, anaesthetic these days and everything, not Apparently so. Not in Bristol, though, Not in the West Country, no. They, they still tie it to a door? Um, well, to be honest, if you've got, if you've got dodgy wisdom teeth, you're a witch. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that, Gervais. You know, they will you out to the ducking stool, bob, bob, bob. Yeah. And he still works there, does he? Yes, he does, yeah. With his two brothers, Carry also. On. Called Bob, I know. Get on with it, get on you with know. It. Um, and uh, this is a different Becky, Becky and Laura. They wondered if I showed you those nice pictures they sent through. Oh, what were they of? The apes. <laughs> the apes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did laugh, did you? <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that's you, Steve. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I got facts here from uh, Bernard. He says, I'm a regular listener and I want to know why is Ricky being taken off the air? Bernard, if you don't know the answer to that, you're not a regular listener. <laughs> Um, well, which is a shame because you've had a few other forces oh, yeah. and stuff. I had, a, I had a letter. This is the first letter I've had for years. It says, We love Steve. We pledge our alliance to all forces amphibian or insectile and we worship the grand fish monster. So I'm getting kind of positive mail like that. Mm. And it's too late. It's too late that in the day. That is positive. That's a lovely letter. A it's lot of people, you know, day. most people would like, you know, to be called you. the fish monster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's Believe fantastic. Believe me, that, that is a sign of affection. Yeah. Michael Schumacher's won the British Grand Prix in a very confusing Matt, finish. Sorry, Matt, you... Matt, can I stop you there? Have yeah. you got any, like, fun stories? <laughs> yeah, Matt, have you got any sort of, like, two Ronnie style new stories? No, there's no, no fun. It's oh, news, you know, there's no fun. No, you know, new, two Ronnie style, like, you know, a man with a meat cleaver has been terrorising nudist colonies. Inspector Wilson of Scotland Yard has had a tip-off, but he expects to be on duty tomorrow. That's, or, like, or like <laughs> Scotland Yard had all its toilets stolen, police have nothing to go on. That's what we want, that's what everyone's after. Oh, right, no, nothing as interesting. As that, okay, go on, well, carry are. on. No, carry on. on, as you are, sorry. Okay, right. Shall I the news with nothing really silly? I'm Matt Johnson. That was good. That was good, it's all right, yeah. You want stuff like, you know, um, a lorry load of wigs has crashed <laughs> on the M4, police are combing the area. That's what you're after. That. Um, you, you're in news, can you libel the dead? Um, I'd rather steer clear of any controversial comments, if you don't mind. Okay, no, no, I didn't mean you, I didn't expect you to. I don't, I don't think you can, but I'm, I'm not sure. What do you think of Doris Stokes? Um, I think she was a very talented lady who brought joy to a lot of people. That's fantastic. So, so you don't think she's a prostitute? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. Well, Steve. Yeah. You know we gave away those CDs. Hey, we, great giveaways. Just good radio, isn't it? We've got CDs to give away. Tickets and that's good radio. Mm. Do, do you remember who won them? What, last week? Yeah. Well, no. Right. I've got to get them back. What, are these the CDs that we took, we took from the library? Yeah. Anyway? I've got to get them back. 0171 580 2000. If you won those CDs, could you give us a call? <laughs> well, why should they bother? They're probably busy listening to them. You, do you know what I mean? You can't give something away and then take it back. Yeah, I need big time. I've got to get them back. We've had a uh, bill for the computer as well. That's mine. No, it's not yours. It is it's mine. It's not yours. I procured that that is uh, uh, that is mine now no the, that is technically that technically counts as ownership listen gervais it's not yours all right i've told you this before i've explained this to you a hundred times what all right if you if you urinate on something yeah it is not yours it does in no, the cat world. that's what yours. cats do that is what cats do they go around the they territory that's theirs they they urinate on it that computer's mine if a cat urinates on something yeah. right yeah in its cat Philosophy, yeah. it owns that. I agree. It's that's a sort of uh, well, what do you call it? A sort of territory thing. What's the difference? You're not a cat. No, I know. You're not a cat. That's discrimination. No, you're not a cat. You can't. You can't live life by cat rules. Well, I've got loads of stuff like that. My flat's full <laughs> of stuff that I've got like that. What? Yeah, I've got uh, two telephone boxes. Right. Um, I've got a cash point machine. Yeah. yeah. Glim was furious. He was getting out money. Right. Um, didn't the uh, side of a church. That's yours. Yeah. Um, two BMWs. Well, I had two. I've got one now. What happened? Yeah. The, the, the second one, the owner caught me and he started doing the same. And because I started first, I finished first, so he finished last, so it was technically his again. Is that how it works? Yeah. If I piss on something, then that's mine. Yeah. But if someone else pisses on it, then that's theirs. Yeah. 
Is that how it works? Could you say urinate? This is XFM 104.9. Not yours. They are, they're not, they're, they're my shoes, Jimmy. Yeah, and they're mine now. <laughs> no, they're not, I can't believe, I, this is why I don't want to do this anymore. Why? Just, I can't believe you. They're my shoes now, that is how, that is ownership, that counts. In the cat world. It, they're my shoes now, and some of the carpet is mine as well. In the cat world. Yeah, wow. You cannot live your life by the rules of the cat world. I course. can, I can. How, what does, what does your girlfriend what, Watch do? this. Oh. Not many people can do that. Oh, God. Uh, because I just think it's a wonderful thing. You know, the, the YMCA doesn't get enough publicity, good press. Yeah. And the village people did them a favour. I mean, why on earth they wrote well, that song? Well, you know, to, to publicise the YMCA. I mean, who thinks, hmm, I don't know, uh, <laughs> oh, people have done the police force, you know, they've done... Hold on, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait, this is very good, this is, but I think you mean this, that you don't know what that song, you, you think that they're actually some sort of advertising for the YMCA, were you? Well, I don't know, it just seems really odd to me. Well, if I is remember like, at the time, the, y, the YMCA complained at the time because of the connotations. What kind of, it's just a PR thing for the YMCA, I imagine. It's like the one that in the, in the no, Navy, no, no, no. in the Navy, yeah. you know, the sort of PR thing for the, for the Navy, it's just yeah. bizarre. When they would, when they were dressed up as sailors and stuff. Yeah, well, whatever. Where, whereas usually they sort of like construction worker with a nice moustache, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Traffic cop. Yeah. Jumpers. And, uh... What? I don't... Is this, I'm worried about the Red Indian Chief. You, am I supposed to be I reading... Know, that has been am a I big... supposed to be reading between the lines or something? <coughs> I, well, I, I don't understand. I mean, I don't really understand. I mean this seriously. Okay, I don't right. I understand what you're talking okay, about. Okay, this, this is fine. Well, that's it. Uh, obviously, there were gay connotations. It's a, like a, a, a gay icon record, isn't it? YMCA in the Navy. That was the point of it. What did you need? One of them dressed as Judy Garland. What? What? I don't understand. What was your problem with that? What? What? But there's no. I don't understand why that suggests that people are gay. I don't. It doesn't necessarily. It's like it's high camp, isn't it? It's been adopted since as well. But the four of them, there's there's a there's a guy dressed as a motorcycle cop. There's yeah. no reason why he should be gay. There's no there's way, a, there's a, why anyone should be gay. There's a builder. Chosen, what, there's what? a builder. Yeah. All right. Um. So no builders are gay ever. There's, you can't another, be there's gay, another one. I can't. What the other one is? Right. And then there's a Red Indian. Why on earth the Red Indian <laughs> is well, supposed to be an icon? I don't know about that. I'm, I'm, no I, I'm, I'm flummoxed on that one, I'll be honest. But it, so what I'm saying to you, Gervais, is if you're gonna use, you, if you can talk about gay people, then, then why don't they use the cliches? Why isn't there a uh, hairdresser? Right. And because it's probably the sort of cliches that even seen gays want to get away from. Also, that's your confusing camp. ITV gays with with real homosexual people who live normal lives. If I'm going to write a song about gay people, I'm going to have a hairdresser. <laughs> yeah, you are. In order to all you are. Is, in order to appeal to a gay community, I'd have a hairdresser, John Inman, um, <laughs> uh, Larry Grayson, obviously, and uh, I don't know. Um, well, you, well, well, pe well, you wouldn't have Jason Donovan then, obviously. <laughs> because he's not. So you wouldn't have him, would you? No, I wouldn't have Jason Donovan. No. Well, I wouldn't have Philip Schofield. I, I wouldn't even have Andy, I wouldn't have Andy Peters. Right. I wouldn't have Andy Peters. Okay, I'm getting I scared. Would, if Shut I, up! I would not I'm, have Andy I'm Peters. I'm getting scared! I would not Shut have Andy up. Peters! Um, I've been watching a lot of telly over the weekend. Oh, right, go on. Yeah. Been fantastic. Uh, well, my favourite. I don't know if I, you were in the week. I was briefly telling Claire about it. Three, two, one.